Hello, Internet people. My name is Rick, and I have an interesting world to show you. Welcome to Episode 1 of the Matan World Server Tour. In this episode, I will be talking about... The Aqueduct. The Aqueduct Hotel. The Pyramid of Rotorua. My goal is to make videos that are interesting to beginning Minecraft players, or even people who don't play it, but can inspire and even be helpful to advanced players. Here are a few things you should know about this server. This is a strictly survival server, meaning every block you see placed here was mined, chopped, or harvested by a player. Nothing was given away for free. We are currently finishing up a few projects before we are done with this world and start a new one. If there is a demand for it, I will try to make this world available for download. Also, if these videos are popular enough that the fan server can become self-funding, I will definitely set one up. This aqueduct took months to make, playing casually. The stone to make this came from mining for diamonds, and from playing with TNT in this underground roller coaster project. I wanted to make it old and worn looking, so I used cracked and mossy stone brick harvested from Stronghold. It took several players several trips to get enough to do it. These arches are solid, but I used mostly dirt, some wood, even wool in some places, whatever we had lots of. I placed every block myself, but I had two other players donating the stone to do this. I would estimate only a third of the time it took to make this was spent placing blocks. The rest was spent running back and forth to get the materials here. All that running around makes your Minecraft person hungry, so it's a good thing we had a farm nearby. To save on having to run back and forth to town every night, my guy would sleep on the job site. To come up with this design, I looked at pictures of Roman aqueducts. I quickly realized the Romans did not use exactly the same pattern for every aqueduct they made, which made me feel more free to just do whatever I thought looked good. Before I put down even one block, I drew out on graph paper two different designs and then picked the one I liked best. These curves were a little tricky. I also drew these out on graph paper before trying to build them. Once I started building them, I was not totally happy with how they were turning out, so I ended up changing the design slightly. That's another bit of advice I'd give to people doing large projects. Don't be afraid to change your mind if you don't like how it's turning out even if it means having to undo some of what you've already done. The second bend is actually an exact copy of the first bend. I'm very happy with the way the whole project turned out. I like the way the aqueduct can be seen from most places in the city. With the render distance turned up the way it is, you can see the aqueduct through other parts of it. I like to make up stories about the things I build. Do you do that? In my mind, the people of this city needed an aqueduct to get water from a natural spring on top of this mountain to their farm. They could not build it straight there because the ground had too much water in it to hold the weight of all the stone. The first time they turned it on, it worked better than they expected, so it leaked, causing all the ponds and lakes around the city. The reality is that I made the aqueduct wrap around the city because it looks cool, and the lakes are here because all this part of the world was generated before the update that made there be less water in deserts. Here is the Aqueduct Hotel. I think this is an impressive building. I like the subtle use of creeper face blocks. It would be easy to overdo it. I like the structural supports. They remind me of the triangles you see in a lot of modern architecture. Let's go inside. Here's the entrance. With suitably grand staircase, spiral chandelier, reception desk. Past the front desk is the hotel ballroom. The employees who work here get free cake. I really like this balcony, which gives views of the second floor and vice versa. The hotel has 24 rooms and they are all fully furnished. The 
This hotel was built by the player Anne, and she did have a little help from two players who were donating materials. The blue wallpaper used up almost all the lapis there was on the server at the time. Special expeditions were made into the nether to get enough marble to do this. Here is a typical third floor room of the hotel. It is spacious, well lit, and has a great view. Note that Anne took the effort to not have torches in the rooms. I personally checked every one to make sure that they were not too dark. The hotel management thought that having their guests blown up by creepers might be bad for business. Every room of the hotel comes complete with its own bathroom. As you might expect, the top floor has the biggest rooms and the best views. People lucky enough to stay in the top two floors even get their own walkout garden balconies. The views from up here are amazing. The animals outside the hotel are no coincidence. I've been feeding them so that there would be more of them for the guests to look at. For the grand opening of the hotel, we're going to launch fireworks from the roof. So look for that in an upcoming episode. Here are some reasons I think the hotel is an artistic and architectural triumph. Although the inside is made from many types of building materials, the outside is kept simple. It has a bit of a pattern to it that is subtle. It's large and impressive and shows a great deal of effort. It's not perfectly symmetrical, and that's a good thing. It's well thought out. For instance, the bathroom windows are high and small, just like in real life. Now let's go to the pyramid. Here is the pyramid of Rotorua. It seems like every Minecraft player builds a pyramid sooner or later, doesn't it? Here's our take on it. It looks like a cute, tiny pyramid from the outside. Here's a few views from the inside. As you can see, I decided to put villagers down here. I had to fence them in to protect them from zombies and slimes. It turns out that the caves and mines under Rotorua are so well lit that egg-holding zombies just have not been the problem that I thought they might be. Although you do see them occasionally. This pyramid is basically finished. I put in a few bridges over the stream to make it easier to get around down here. Because I put in skylights over the doors, many of these houses are considered valid houses by the villagers. In other words, at night, or when it's raining, they will run into them. Because they are valid houses, I only had to move a few villagers down here, and they grew their own population. Also partly thanks to this villager-generating building I built, and the skylight over it. Moving them down here turned out to be one of the few projects in Minecraft that went faster than expected. I simply made a path out of dirt and train tracks to the area of the city villagers were hanging out in, then put down a minecart and pushed villagers into it. One time I put the cart down and a villager ran over to it and jumped in. I thought, wow, a volunteer. This guy really wants to go live in the pyramid. There is still this big empty space that just seems to be asking for something to be put in it. 
What do you think I should put here? Leave a suggestion in the comments. This pyramid was Anne's idea. She built the structure you see on the outside. I blasted through the rock using TNT, which was a lot of fun, and went surprisingly quickly. Anne came back and cleaned up the blocks left by the TNT, so in all fairness she did more than half the work. I put in the trees and river, made the houses, and moved the villagers in. This project taught me several things. Sometimes the idea for a project that's a lot of fun comes from other people. By working with others, you can do projects that are larger and more impressive than that which you can do by yourself. The pyramid and beacon were added by the player Timmy Al to bring the speed effect to this side of town. We're talking about maybe moving it just a little bit lower for looks. If you have any questions about how we did any of this, just let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye!